All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of This Week in Charts via Carnivore Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you're not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment, let us know your thoughts. Come find Jason on Patreon or come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, getting into it here so you can see we had a nice up move in the broad general equity markets here this week. A um, little bit of a dip on Monday, kind of a reversal candle, and then really just got negated Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then a little pullback on Friday as we went up into resistance. But if we take a look on the weekly here, you can see we were talking about this kind of bullish inside bar on the weekly. You had a little one, two, three pullback inside of that green candle, and then a continuation this week. So a nice outside week for the S&P 500, as well as the NASDAQ. We can take a look at the triple Qs here. Um, so triple cues on and obviously the market did stall out on friday partially to the uh the snapchat earnings as you can see the pullback there in tech and in the s p um said that that had to do with kind of advertising um you know tightening up from the advertisers and the kind of the fact that they didn't guide for a quarter uh, the next quarter so um, but in any case nice move up here for the cues you got above this trend line and this one, which is, this was your previous breakdown area. And now we're kind of just stalling out. We stalled out right at this red bar high, essentially, uh, going back to June 9th. That was the breakdown before the CPI data when that number was actually leaked a day beforehand. Uh, but in any case, you're up into some resistance here on the triple Qs. Um, so we'll watch for that. And on the SPY here, if you look on the daily, you can see we're basically, basically went up into that gap fill. We did pierce the even round number of 400. So the high on Friday was 400 spot 18. Um, so there will be a little bit more resistance into this gap fill here. Um, but overall, a nice outside week for the market. And overall, kind of big picture right now, uh, I still think there's a little bit more upside in this market, but time is starting to run short a little bit. And I do expect some selling pressure, some more selling pressure to come into the market here um, as we get you know, into the later summer months here. But for right now, the summer rally is in full swing. and you know, we talked about the equinox low that being put in uh, right there uh, we said that was going to happen most likely and then we also talked about a, a pivot low around the uh, the July 4th holiday and we got a higher low there and then uh, you know a nice little summer rally here on our hands and that's been pretty uh, spot on so far but you know again there's probably still a little bit of upside left in this market but we're coming into a lot of resistance on some of these charts and um, you know we are in summer doldrums so we can expect some you know, the market to hold up a little bit longer here, but um, there will be a lot more pressure coming in in the next month or two. Um, I am working on the timing of it and um, pretty much have a good, you know, sense of when that is. But, um, you know, we just got to take it one day at a time here. Anyways, let's move on here. So let's take a look at the semis. So same kind of thing here. You know, bro broke above this trend line Monday. Couldn't close above it. And then, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just massive surge. Got us through this trend line. Got us through the 50 moving average. We went up and filled this gap here. Now the semis are getting into some resistance, so they're going to need to do some backing and filling likely if they want to have another little push higher here. But overall, no real problems at the current time. Just got a little overbought there. You can see the move basically from 200 all the way up to, you know, 230, 235 here in about seven or eight days. So a big move there for the semis. IGV Cloud Software, also a nice follow through above the 50, above this trend line, and then that pullback, obviously, with everything else on Friday here in the uh, on the snap earnings, this all this also went into this uh, this kind of breakdown area. This was your failed bullish flag, and uh, we had a breakdown, so that was that is now resistance on the backside. So again, maybe some backing and filling has to be in the cards here, but I don't see a whole lot more upside here in IGV. You know, maybe 300, 303 if we can flag a little bit. Um, but again, a lot of these stocks are a lot of these uh, areas are getting kind of uh, extended and they are kind of on borrowed time here, if you ask me. Um, Dow Transports, same thing, made new 52 week lows. And if you remember the video last week, I said, um, you know, kind of the, the one positive here going into all these earnings here, these transport earnings, is that you're already at 52 week lows. So you might get a kind of an inverse reaction and that's kind of what we're seeing here so we had some we've had uh, some of these companies report and you know they're starting to get a little bit of short squeezing going on so kind of a sell the rumor buy the news kind of effect here for some of these stocks case big you know big big picture here you got above this trend line you're above the 50 on the dow transports and now it's starting to flag a little bit so there could be another little leg up here 
in the DJT. But again, you get up into this red bar, you get closer to this 100 moving average, you're going to be into a lot. And I mean a lot of resistance on the Dow transports, but overall a nice move off the lows and it's been a nice little pop here. Um, let's take a look at interest rates, 10 year treasury yield. So really it was just range bound for kind of like two weeks, the better part of two weeks. And then Thursday, big engulfing reversal. You can notice here, it tried to close back above the 50 and the 20 on Wednesday, and then a huge reversal here on Thursday, and then a continuation down on Friday. So um, maybe somebody got a little bit, um, you know, knew what was going to happen with that Snapchat earnings report. And because essentially what the story was on Friday is that now there's renewed fears of, you know, an economic slowdown. You know, if these advertisers are, are you know, pulling money, um, that's obviously going to be reflective of the, the the overall strength of the economy in general, but especially for these tech names. But um, so that, you know, caused bonds to get a bid. We stalled out right here at this 100 MA. I told you guys we were going to stop right there. Um, and now we have this trend line here. So we do have a, a possible head and shoulder pattern here. So you can see your shoulder, head, shoulder. Um, it has not triggered yet. They tried to trigger Friday, um, but it was able to close back above the neckline. So it's not triggered yet. However, on the 30 year, it did trigger so we gapped below that trend line so there's your shoulder head shoulder neckline we gapped below it um and you can see it on the weekly as well so it's there on the weekly you know it's a tight pattern but it's there um and we got a bid off that 20 moving average basically friday afternoon so we'll see if we can get a weekly close back above this neckline the pattern's negated but otherwise we would see a pretty sharp um reversal in bond yields at least that is what the charts are saying currently um so just be aware of that bonds are getting a bid right now because of you know basically recession fears and that's really kind of what it comes down to but a nice little move there off of the highs on bond yields pretty much across the board as far as corporate debt and hyg this one got a bid along with the general equities um, pulled back in on Friday, just like everything else, again, you kind of came up and filled some of these gaps, which needed to happen. Um, you know, maybe there's a little bit more upside in HYG if, if you know, equities hold up. Um, but again, I think these are all kind of uh, on borrowed time as well. All right, home builders here. XHB, nice little surge off the lows. Again, a nice short squeeze. We talked about this kind of, you know, pattern here. You got a nice little surge and then kind of an, a sideways action so kind of like a sloppy bullish flag here and then a nice little push off the lows little doji candle on friday this actually held up better than a lot of things on friday giving that the market was down and this still managed to scratch out a small gain um so xhb holding up okay this is into a ton of resistance though so um, maybe it can hold up a little bit longer. Same thing with ITB. Uh, maybe this can hold up a little bit longer, but I don't see these things going much higher here. Um, I think the home builders are definitely getting a little long in the tooth at this area. And uh, I think risk favors the downside currently. Um, same thing with VNQ. You know, a nice little kind of ABC up. Um, there's a, you know, there's a wall of resistance into this gap right here. And if it can get through that, you know, I don't see it getting much through, you know, 96 or 97. I think that would be kind of your max move. Um, but again, nice little ABC up off of the lows there uh, for the VNQ. Uh, financials here, so XLF, you know, same thing, 52-week lows into earnings. And then, you know, kind of a, a sell the news, by the rumor, move off the lows for the financials. Got above that 50-day moving average on Thursday and couldn't really confirm it on Friday. Again, these are kind of extended here short term. Um, and I'd, you know, I'd say max upside is probably, you know, maybe this gap fill. Maybe you can get a little bit higher here, um, just above 34. But um, XLF also coming under pressure here. And again, inverted yield curve makes sense that the banks are struggling right now off the lows. Broker dealers are holding up a little bit better. Um, but again, you're going to come into a lot of resistance here. So this is your pivot here. This was support. It broke, became resistance here when you consolidated and had a failed bull flag. So now that's being tested again, and you got that 100 moving average down sloping as well. So um, a lot of resistance up here on broker dealers. So just keep that in mind. Maybe they can hold up a little bit longer. Again, the timing models that I've been working on suggest that you know we still have a little bit of time on the clock here, and the market can hold up for a little bit longer. Um, but we're expecting. Um, you know, a lot more selling pressure to come in here as we get closer to the fall. All right, crude here, basically just kind of a sideways to, to negative week. Um, and we gapped down Monday, had a nice little rally, then rolled over by Friday. It's basically trying to hold on to this 200 moving average right now. 
which also coincides with the 50 week moving average. So again, you guys know the drill, nothing's really changed uh, as far as what I'm expecting. I do expect one more little leg down in crude and then we'll have a good buying opportunity here moving forward. But um, you know, crude's hanging in there. It is in a little bit of a daily downtrend. Um, we gotta respect that. I still think there's another push down and that, you know, same thing goes for XLE, XOP and OIH and all of the producers. Again, very oversold. Uh, short term, so they were due for a bounce here. OIH has just been under a lot of pressure, though. Uh, but XLE did get a bounce this week, although kind of, you know, not participating Thursday, so a little bit weaker on Thursday, as was XOP. But again, maybe a little bit more upside in these energy names before the next leg down, and then it will be time to get into them. But uh, we don't want to jump the gun just yet. Uh, there's still a little bit more downside, if you ask me. Nat gas bucking the trend here in energy. Um, so this got way higher than I thought it was going to in the near term. You know, we did dollar cost average in carnivore trades. We did uh, play this with Boyle a few weeks ago, actually about a month ago now. And we dollar cost average down to about 550, and we got in there pretty nicely right at the lows. And, you know, it was kind of a toss up. We got a nice, uh, you know, I think it was a 10, 12% gain out of it. But, you know, it was kind of, to me, it was a toss up as, as to whether it could get through this, uh, you know, six, seven dollar area here. And, um, you know, I got through that and then we, you know, I told you guys it was going to stall out right at that 50 and it stalled out for a whopping one, one single day, essentially. And then just, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, huge blast off. Now it is coming into a pretty good level here around 850. There's your big sell bar. So that's where there's going to be a lot of supply. So just keep that in mind. But NatCast has held up really well here. Um, I honestly don't have a trade on it at the moment, uh, but just respect the, uh, the power of this trend here but again it is very very short term overbought so I, I wouldn't be surprised at any sort of volatility um at any given time um uranium here so let's look at camco again tried to rally it up tried to rally up then uh, thursday friday came back in so it got above that one level i gave you at 2351 and it basically you know, it, it tried to test that that red bar high we talked about but you still have an inside bar here so i do think there's another uh possibly another leg down in the uranium stocks you see urnm same thing you know tried to test this red bar high and then came back off the highs again as long as we stay inside this red bar there's still uh selling pressure in the uranium plays but that will ultimately lead to a buying opportunity you can see the same thing here on sprott still inside of that red bar there so again um Probably a little bit more downside in, in energy across the board. Net gas has really been the one that's kind of bucked the trend. Um, but as far as, you know, uranium and, you know, these oil plays, I do think there's another leg down. But again, it'll en end up being what I think will be a pretty good buying opportunity for all types of investors, by the way. Um, Mosaic here, so Potash plays again, kind of just basically just kind of a sideways to up week again. Nothing's really changed here either. Same thing with uh, Intrepid, still kind of making lower highs for the most part. I do think these have another little flush down as well, and then it'll be time to get into those. So just be patient with that. Dollar index continuing to hold up. Um, did come off the highs here. Had a nice little uh, topping kind of candle there, and I made note of that last week in the video. It, you know, could have been a better, you know, close. I would have liked to have seen a close down here for more of a sell signal. Never really got a sell signal on the dollar, to be honest. Um, but we did come back into that 20 moving average. Um, it held up okay. You know, it's a pretty good reversal bar. It's still very extended, but again, the dollar is very strong, and I wouldn't rule out a move up to 110 here uh, at some point. But um, again, the dollar is also kind of getting on borrowed time here, if you ask me. Um, in the bigger picture, it's just it's just too overbought, and it's it's basically parabolic on all time frames. So just bear that in mind. Uh, as far as gold is concerned, this is now into some support here, as are some of the miners. Uh, let's take a look here at. So gold futures, I showed you guys this trend line before. We are below that trend line, but there is a still chance. Um, we still have about a week. Yeah, we have exactly one trading week left before the end of the month. So we could easily bounce back above that trend line short term. And, um, you know, we could save, you know, price could essentially be safe for a little while. Um, you can see that kind of double bottom, maybe triple bottom area, if you want to call it that, on gold. So it got a nice bounce Thursday, Friday, and uh, also very oversold here. So gold... I do like here in the short term, I also like the level on GDX. Um, full disclosure, I am long GDX with Carnivore Trades, just so everybody's aware. But I really love the level that GDX is into right now um, on the bigger time frames. But um, again, I do think the miners and the metals are coming to some support here. I don't know if it's going to be a long-term low, but it is definitely a tradable low, um, if you ask me. And then the same thing on silver here right into that $18 area. So nice little, this is kind of where you broke out in 2020 
And um, yeah, it's basically back testing that. And it's in an oversold condition. So I do think silver will get at least a short term bounce here. But um, again, metal's a little oversold. I love platinum as well. I'm also in this, full disclosure. Um, and this hit my level and got a nice bounce off of that. And now it's really just, you know, we did potentially make like a, a higher low here. Can we make a higher high? As soon as you can do that, um, platinum can get a pretty good lift to the upside. Palladium with a nice pop on Friday as well. Although this is a very thin market, so very hard to gauge that one. And then copper. Um, potentially here put in a short-term low as well because we got a nice little candle there tail candle and now we're kind of flagging inside of this little green bar so possibly a little abc up in the cards for copper again i still think this one also has another leg down as well but um in the near term it can get a bounce it's, it's just too oversold to continue selling at this point if you ask me so i do think it needs a counter trend bounce here but i do think there will be another leg down and then there will be another opportunity to get into that as well. So all these, you can see the same kind of theme here. All these commodities plays, um, I do think they got one more good flush in them. And then um, there will be some really good buying opportunities here for the future. Anyways, let's flip over to uh, Bitcoin and Ether and talk about that really quickly here. One second here. All right, hold on. I can't get my Bitcoin chart up here on TradingView. So we'll just look at the futures here. So I apologize for that, but we'll look at the futures. It's basically the same chart. So we're coming off the lows here with Bitcoin. And we finished Friday with a little micro flag. Um, I can see that my actual, uh, um, on my other screen, I don't have it up right now, unfortunately. But on TradingView, there's been little change here today. I'm doing this video on Saturday. There's been very little change here in Bitcoin. So basically what we have is a nice move off the lows and we're starting to flag here on the daily time frame. So there could be a little bit more upside here um, if Bitcoin can kind of consolidate and push sideways. Um, we could get a push up to that 26, 26, 5 area, you know, maybe 27,000, but then we're into a lot of resistance. Again, I talked to you guys about this weekly inside bar. I still think that holds up. I still think there's more downside here in crypto but in the near term again just like the general equity markets you know really the same kind of thing here that i'm looking at is that you know we could see a little bit more short-term upside but big picture we are going to come under a lot of selling pressure here and then you see ether got above this red bar here um, i can't see it on my actual trading view chart but on the futures you did close above that red bar high so i would give ether the upside bias here maybe closer to that 2000 area um i think that would be kind of max move but the ether chart does look a lot better than the bitcoin chart for what that's worth um ether did come nicely noticeably higher off the lows here and it is putting better consolidation in uh than bitcoin but overall again just like the equity markets here we're looking at the same kind of thing here so maybe a little bit more upside here in the uh, SPY, you know, I could see it getting up to, you know, 407, maybe 410 here on um, triple Qs. Maybe they want to go up and test that, uh, you know, 100 moving average, but there's a wall of resistance here. This is where you broke down here, right? So there's your pivot. Pivot was support, was support, wasn't support anymore, and then it was resistance here. So there's a little bit of upside here. Um, again, the, the timing work that I've done on it, we should have a little bit more time on the clock here, but it is getting close to um, what I think will be a pretty good uh, sell signal coming on uh, in the coming months. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com, and I'll talk to you guys all next week.